Hey everybody, it's Joe DeGanzik on Lighting Answers, and this is our wrap-up episode for CES 2016. A humongous show, as always, up in Las Vegas. We're going to start with our wrap-up of lighting because lighting wasn't really a humongous category because lighting is, uh, CES is not a lighting show per se. In terms of smart bulbs and multifunction devices, that was a trend that we definitely saw. We saw it starting a bit last year, but even more pronounced this year. So 2016, we're going to continue to see these devices that are they're LED lights, but they do more than that. Obviously, we're familiar with LED lights that have smarts in them, whether they're Bluetooth based and they change colors, they're Wi-Fi based and they change colors, or they have uh, multiple functions in one. And now that includes adding speakers for potential whole house audio applications. In addition, uh, microphones for listening to alerts and issues and problems um, that might be going on. The Beyond Bulbs announced a few months back, able to listen for a doorbell per se, someone that might be casing your home, and replay the lights exactly as they would be turned off and turned on by you when you were actually home. So these type of innovative products that are coming out in the market, I think are going to be either a hit or they're going to be a dud. For the rest of the LED lighting segment for 2016, it's a little more cloudy because this market has advanced, it has matured rapidly, and a good percentage of the people who have already now upgraded to these modern LED bulbs are going to be much harder to convince to buy a new LED bulb that saves another, what, half a watt or one watt of power. I personally think that the killer app is to actually make an LED bulb that A, it looks like near exactly a traditional light bulb, make it light up like an old fashioned light bulb, you know, even multi, you know, uh, omnidirectional light and dimming. And dimming is combined with the color temperature when you dim the bulb. Things don't look the same under dimmed LED light that doesn't change color as they do under that warm glow. So at the end of the day, it's doable. People have done it. So let's get it done. Lighting industry. Home kit. Much of a bigger news thing for CES 2015 than 2016, if you ask me for my opinion of it. And looking at the products that came out, which were largely, some were actual just upgrades of existing products. Some were new by the same manufacturer who may have already had certain uh, HomeKit enabled products. Is HomeKit ever going to be enormous? Is, er is Apple going to license it out beyond the Apple ecosystem? Probably not. HomeKit needs a push from Apple. We know the manufacturers have had their devices out there, iDevices, iHome, now Hunter fans, um, a plethora of devices. They're available. Lutron, the Casita wireless uh, system, um, that got upgraded. Insteon got upgraded. You know, just keep naming off manufacturers. It needs a home application, just like HealthKit, Apple's health ecosystem, um, has a centralized health app that actually stores all the information and lets you manipulate it to a certain extent. It is time now for them to release iOS 10, which is a kind of a big number and perhaps a big deal within um, within Apple. I think Siri needs to be able to get better in terms of recognizing kind of similar names to what you might call a particular device or a particular scene, because if you um, if you forget what they're named, you have a problem. And honestly, many times it's easier to look things up via a scrolling list and just tap something and try to remember, what did I call that light? Was it corner up light? Was it corner lamp? It's not always intuitive. Voice commands always work well on TV and in sci-fi because they are scripted. But in real life, it's a little bit different. And finally, well, maybe not finally, home automation. The big term, the smart home, the internet of things, it's more confusing than ever. And here's why. Home automation used to be just for 
the nerds and the geeks and those who wanted to connect all this stuff together. It started with the clapper. Nope, obviously I don't have one, nothing changed. Let's fast forward to today um, and to people like Smart Things trying to upend the market and create a really nifty, cool, sort of sexy um, home automation hub that would work with a lot of stuff, right? And then people buy it and they're like, wow, this is cool, I can do all this stuff. And I, I, I loaded the app onto my iPhone. So I should be able to control um, Smart Things with Siri, right? Wrong. You've also got the older ecosystems, we'll just play with Insteon again, um, that have to come into the future, right? Insteon and its devices were never internet enabled. They were never app enabled like we're used to because these devices didn't exist when Insteon and the older technologies, say like X10, were created. So they have to come into the future. Home automation today is more confusing than ever. You have a multiple standards. You have multiple companies saying, our standard is the best. You want it. Okay, well, why do we want your standard? And should a company like Google be trusted to create a standard that's going to connect all of the Internet of Things devices and all of the home automation devices? Should it be more of an independent consortium like the Wi-Fi um, organization or like the Bluetooth organization creating some sort of standard that's going to bring all these devices together. Personally, I think it should be an independent organization. Energy harvesting or battery free devices and you're wondering what's that? Well, if you think battery free, the easiest example is the old or perhaps even current, uh, since I don't own one, uh, solar calculator, right? It gets energy when you put it under a light source of any kind and you can use it. Super. This is the one that can, comes with the uh, Lutron Casita system that takes a little coin cell battery. What if these devices didn't need that, right? So we obviously are familiar with devices that don't need batteries to operate. Um, Philips demonstrated this, not that it was brand new because companies had been working on this for years prior. Philips with the Hue tap device can actually transmit signals right to the Hue bridge. And Ocean was started by Siemens 15 years ago on this very concept of creating these energy harvesting battery free devices. And they actually just entered into the partnership with Zigbee to integrate this technology. Enerby out of France is also working on these technologies. They want to create their own uh, dimmer switch or wireless light switch that again uses that sort of pressing, uh, pressing motion translates to energy, translates to a signal being transmitted. Uh, speaking of Wi-Fi and protocols, it could be Wi-Fi's moment, you know, Wi-Fi Halo. It's something that already um, is writing or is based on 802.11ah. That's something that hasn't been certified yet, but will be soon. It's supposed to be longer range, low power, better to get through buildings and whatnot, um, and more uh, a higher data rate. Also, it'll actually get the internet or the cloud directly to these internet of things instead of hopping from one device to the next. Like with smart locks, many of them are simply Bluetooth. Then you have to go to some sort of bridge device that has to go to your Wi-Fi that has to go to the router, then to the internet. Multiple hops equals more chance for problems and obviously complicating your setup. The last thing I want to talk about is application and control. How do you control all this stuff? What is the best application? Some would say it's voice, right? Amazon Echo is huge. It's very popular for however many it's sold. Um, Mike Elgin, who used to be on Tech News Today on the Twit Network, said it best about a year ago. Amazon Echo is the perfect device. You probably never have to upgrade the hardware. It is a connected speaker. It sounds pretty good. It has all of these um, array uh, of several microphones so that it can do near and distance listening. And it's been a hit. It's, it's fantastic. And now it is compatible with all these different home automation systems because it's communicating to them over the internet. Any so it means that Amazon can work with any company that makes a home automation system or anything at all that is internet connected and it has some sort of open API and work with it. And they have. 
I, I personally like to have physical buttons to push. I don't mind actually using voice when it's applicable. I like to have actual physical uh, buttons or knobs on the wall because it just makes sense for the application. There are companies still trying to solve this um, beyond the voice thing. There's the Neo device that um, one of our viewers alerted us to um, that was also at um, CES uh, we, that we didn't happen to see. Um, there's also the Seven Hugs remote. Both of those actually do similar things in different ways. Um, it's a physical remote control that's able to change its interface and supposed to be very, very universal and very easy to use and obviously control more than, say, your TV or your stereo. It can control lights and Z-Wave and Zigbee and all of that stuff. Everyone is trying to make this work. Everyone is trying to make a great interface for home automation. Who's going to succeed? Who's going to get there? Is home automation going to get so much better this year? Well, well, we'll see. Um, is it going to get much better in two to three years? Yes. Thanks for watching our series on CES, lighting, home automation, all the cool stuff that came out of CES this year that's going to drive what we're going to see for the rest of the year. And well, we, were going, we will see what happens through the rest of 2016 and we'll bring it to you right here on Lighting Answers. If you're not subscribed, there's a button up there somewhere in that corner that you can subscribe to the show. And I highly recommend it to you because it will mean that more of our stuff will show up in your feed on YouTube. I'm Jody Ganzik and as always, I'll see you next time.